you know, in, in a couple of years, uh, people in the state of California will be going to the polls to, uh, to elect or re-elect our senators. And I'm sure in a couple hours, uh, members of this, uh, of this committee, and I won't pick on anybody, will be going across the street to enjoy a, a drink. And both of those are possible, and I'm talking about the direct election of senators, the 17th Amendment, and the repeal of prohibition, the 18th Amendment, because of movements like this. Our founding fathers, when they drafted the federal constitution, they put in two mechanisms for amending it. The first one, of course, is the traditional mechanism. That is to, uh, to have Congress pass by a, a two-thirds majority, a proposed amendment, and then the states to ratify it by a three-quarters uh, supermajority. They also put in a second mechanism, and that mechanism allows the states to, in effect, rise up and say, Congress, you have not acted. We are demanding that you act. And then Congress would have to call a convention on the topic, and then it would go back to the states, and I stress that, it would go back to the states to be ratified by a three-quarter supermajority. So in the past, when Congress has not acted, and I mentioned the 17th Amendment, I mentioned the 18th Amendment, there's other examples, the states, the state legislators, the people closest to the people in the United States of America, have risen up and passed resolutions like this, binding resolutions. We urge Congress to do a lot of things on the floor. And I'm always, you know, the guy on the floor who's laughing quietly, you know, when we're urging Congress to urge the government of Somalia to urge the United Nations to do, you know. This has teeth. This actually would be a binding resolution, and it's one of the few times, it, this is a unique and arcane constitutional procedure, where the legislatures, the governors don't need to sign it, but the legislators of the state, the people closest to the people, can rise up and say, Congress, you have to act, you have to act on this issue. Uh, in those last instances, the ones I gave, the 17th and 18th Amendment, Congress took note. When you started to see this becoming a groundswell, you, you started to get towards the two-thirds of the states who had passed resolutions like this, Congress took note and they finally acted. They repealed prohibition, they allowed for the direct election of senators. And that's the goal that, we would, that we're hoping for here. Uh, the Citizens United decision, um, most of you are familiar with it. Obviously, that is the one that caused uh, so much uh, uh, ability for late night talk show hosts to joke that corporations are people too. It really did change uh, a tradition in this country. Um, and I'll direct this portion of my comments to the, to the members of the other party on this panel. You know, a lot of uh, the Supreme Court justices who are Republican appointees are, as you know, they're, they're originalists. They're people who believe that the Constitution should be interpreted in the way that it was originally drafted. And I would submit that the idea that a corporation had free speech rights to our founding fathers would have been so ludicrous and just laughed out of, uh, laughed out of the, the wonderful halls in Philadelphia. Uh, you know, corporations at the dawn of our country were, they were essentially chartered entities that existed for shipping. It was the, the idea that shipping was so inherently dangerous that if you were sailing from England to the United States, you had to get this thing called corporate, corporate uh, limited liability because if your ship sunk, it could make you go bankrupt. And they wanted to make sure that people actually sailed from England to the United States. So we created this corporate uh, entity and a corporation has always been a thing. It will always be a thing. It will never be a person in my book. And it's also something that speaks through its, uh, let's put it this way, all the shareholders in a corporation have the right to free, free speech. All the people who work for a corporation have the right to free speech. But the idea that the corporation itself has a right to free speech, the idea that speech, that money is speech, it should offend every single one of us. Because you know what? I'm not that wealthy, and I don't think, I, I've checked some of your Form 700s, neither of you are that wealthy either. Mm -hmm. And when, when we say that money is speech, and that somehow the very, very wealthy have the right to more speech than you and I, that's where I start to have a problem. And that's why the Citizens United decision is so problematic, and that's why it needs to be repealed. Thank you.